Hi everyone, today we're here with Kayla G of the KG Lifestyle on YouTube and thekgtheory.com. She's our KIK Magazine Issue 2 cover girl. Hi Kayla! Hi! <laughs> How are you? I'm awesome. I'm great. I'm really excited about this opportunity. Thank you so much for choosing me to be your cover girl. Well, it was very easy to choose you to be the cover girl. So, <laughs> thank you for accepting. Of course! <laughs> okay, so, for all those who don't know, who is Kayla G? Well, Kayla G, I'm, um, I'm a 28-year-old. I'm from San Diego, California. Okay. And, yeah, I currently live in Detroit, Michigan, though. So, I've had a lot of experiences between these two places. I'm um, a YouTuber. I now work in network engineering as my day job. I'm kind of random, actually. <laughs> Kayla G is very random. I um, Okay. I'm, I love to blog about fashion and hair, natural hair. Mm -hmm. I love to travel. I've been a lot of places that, you know, I'm really, really happy I've had the opportunity to go to. Um, but, yeah, now I'm really just trying to find my footing in the natural hair and blogging world, blogging world. <laughs> and um, and I'm really excited about, about the possibilities that are coming, you know, available to me. Okay, great. So you talked about um, traveling, that like you've done a lot of traveling, and you said between San Diego yes, and California, San Diego, California, and everything, you've had a lot of experiences. So tell us yes. about some of those experiences. Well, um, in college, I went to Ghana for about a week and a half to, um, just as, not like a mission trip or anything, but it was kind of a culture trip. I got credits for it. It was basically like studying abroad, but on a very short term. Okay. So that was, yeah, it was great. It was, that was Ghana. And, you know, as having Ghana as your first place to visit was awesome. because <laughs> so welcoming and the people and the food and it was a blast. And when I came back, I knew I would be going back and I would wow. probably one day at least be able to live there for a period of my life. Like I knew from that one experience that I would be back. And lo and behold, I had the opportunity to go to Sudan to actually teach English there for a year. And that was in 2010. Okay, so how soon after you graduated did you go to Sudan? Um, so I graduated in 2006. So three years later, it took okay. three years. Yeah, I was in you know, working the nine to five like everybody else. Mm -hmm. And I really said to myself, this is not what I'm supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. And I'm like the crazy person that will pack up and like <laughs> literally move across the you're world. You're not crazy. You're fearless. <laughs> you're fearless. <laughs> yes, I like that. That's much better. I like that. I'm going to use that. But <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely was fearless. And everybody, I mean, everybody called me crazy. They were like, what are you doing? You know, I've never taught a class before. Mm -hmm. I had only, you know, mentored and things through my sorority, but... I had never taught a class before, now I'm going to go across the world and teach English to, to kids that don't, you know, their first language is Arabic, like, yeah. that's crazy, but, um, or fearless, there we go. Mm -hmm. uh, fearless, fearless, yes. <laughs> so I did, I literally packed up, put my things in storage, and quit my job, you know, gave my two-week notice. I was in line wow. to become a manager, an HR manager, and I just said, this is not what I'm supposed to be doing, so, I, yeah. <laughs> wow. I've always had that, you know, I just don't believe, I think our time here is extremely important here on earth, and to waste it behind a desk, knowing every day that that's not what you're supposed to do, you can't, you can't do it, and so I really was like, you know, I prayed about it, I made sure that I, I really, really thought about it and prayed about it, and I, I got the go, and, and the, the opportunity just kept you know, opening, and it was like, okay, now I have the flight, and now I have my apartment. It was like, just, I, it, I had to go. Mm -hmm. So, um, while I was there, of course, I traveled all throughout Sudan, um, mostly West Sudan, or I'm sorry, East Sudan, so I wasn't in, in Darfur or anything like that, but I was able to go to Egypt, Cairo. I went to Cairo and saw the pyramids, which was a lifelong dream of mine. Mm -hmm. I'm Dubai for um, a week and a half for my birthday, and it, I was actually there for the 
opening of Burj Khalifa. It was called Burj Dubai back then, but now it's called Burj Khalifa. So I was there for that opening, which was huge. You know, people from all around the world were there. And it was amazing because I didn't know anything about this. You know, the tallest building in the world. Okay, what? Uh -huh. <laughs> I found out like it was this huge thing all around the world. So that was really cool because I think it opened like the day before or day after my birthday. Okay. Yeah, and then I went to Ethiopia, and that is my favorite country on earth so why? far. Why, though? <laughs> Have you been? No, but why is it your favorite Oh my gosh, Ethiopia. I went to Addis Ababa and a couple of different little um, cities around, but I, when I got off the plane, I just felt at home. It was, you know, that overwhelming feeling of these people, is, this, this is where I belong. <laughs> and I don't know why that mm. connection was there, okay. but everyone was just so, so, so hospitable. And, you know, I was there during Easter, so I was able to see a very important you know, thing of, or process of their their culture and, and how they celebrate Easter differently and, and they really, you know, most of the population there is Orthodox Christian, so they're very, very devout and it, it's just amazing to see and I love culture, so they're very, you know, they have a lot of culture there in that country and so I really fell in love with Ethiopia. To this day, I'm like, I claim myself an, an <laughs> Ethiopian honorary, but it's <laughs> <laughs> so that was awesome and um, that's it that's all I, I was able to do while I was there but in the span of nine months I was you know working 12 hour days to save up to be able to take those trips and make sure that I got my you know I got a chance to actually see the, the place that I was around or you know countries that was that were around I was I had a blast it was awesome okay so while moving around, I'm sure you were enjoying yourself thoroughly, but did you ever think, okay, so I'm, I need to get back to real life? Because, <laughs> you know, a lot of people think, oh, it sounds nice, that's fabulous, but that's not for me, you know? Mm -hmm, right. Um, um, you know what? I was really living in the moment, and I think that's important to do. Um, I'm, was, I'm very blessed. You know, I'm not married. I don't have kids. I'm just... It's just me right now, and so, or at least back then, it was just me. So I was, you know, okay, this is what I'm going to do, and and to have that freedom, and you know, every older person, older mentor of mine was telling me, explore, go and live life, do what you can. I had really, really good influences to really, really break that down for me and say, this is what you know. If you have that desire, explore it, do whatever you can now. <laughs> so. Okay. Um, yeah, I never really, I, I thought, you know, oh, I'm not sure what will happen after this, but I really tried to stay in the moment because I knew that if I focused too much on the future, that I would basically be robbing myself of the experience while I was there. Ah, true, true, true. Yeah. Excellent. So, you talked about being single. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, you know, I'm subscribed to you on YouTube. So okay. I Thank did, you. great, of course it's my pleasure, <laughs> so um, I did spy a little video, um, I think it was entitled Why I'm Single, is that yes. right? So yes, yes, one of my blogs. <laughs> I'm guessing you get the question a lot, right? Um, yeah, especially on YouTube, <laughs> not so much day to day. <laughs> but I mean, for black women nowadays, um, you know, and, and generally, I think in the Western culture, a lot of women are moving towards getting married later in life. So has it been by choice? I mean, um, has it been just a decision? Is it that you're waiting? Like, what, what is it that's, you know, causing you right. to be single right now? Because I'm sure a lot of guys will want to know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Um, you know what? It, it's definitely a choice for right now. I, um... I, I tr I'm very structured in my life, and so I try to plan things out as much as possible. I, I am extremely spiritual, though, and so I do understand that God's plan it could be completely different from the one I see. Um, so right now, I believe <laughs> it is, you know, not in in my immediate future to to be in a relationship, and so I've decided. Okay, well. 
right now I'm just going to kind of go with the flow. That's probably the motto of my life. <laughs> go with the flow. So um, you're structured, but you go with the flow. Yes, so and I you, know that sounds so contradictory. <laughs> but how do you keep that balance, though? Because, I mean, somebody who is all structure and no flexibility, you know, that person is kind of hard to be around, and right. it's hard to be that person. Right. I've been that person. <laughs> and the person who is all flexible and not really grounded, um, I've been that person too. And <laughs> it's hard to be that person. So how have you maintained or created a balance for yourself? Well, I um, I definitely, I, I'm very goal-oriented. Ori- so I will, I have my goals and I have, I guess my structure is, you know, planning out how I'm going to attain those but I do understand that I am not the writer of my story you know I I do believe in destiny I do believe in in those those things that you can write your own destiny and you know somewhat but I am not controlling this thing and the purpose of me being here is not what I think it is or you know I know that God has a specific purpose for me and if I if I fight against it you know with too many plans and too much structure, then I'm just robbing myself of the experience that God wants for me. And then on the other hand, if I'm just out there doing whatever without any structure Mm -hmm. or work, you know, behind the the plan or at least the opportunities that may open up for me, if I don't grasp those and actually take some action to to, to, um, experience them, then I'm not going to get anywhere either. So I I think with certain things, you know, I will say no this needs to be this way and you know even then God may say no it's, it's not it's gonna be this way and and being able to surrender to that is definitely what I um how I've been able to balance because I will try my hardest at something and then be able to say well it's not working out and I've prayed about it and this is not God's will. It, you know, I can okay. say that because of my, my uh, relationships with him. So that's probably how I do it. I surrender and, and just take one day at a time. So what do you say? That's how you stay grounded then? Oh, yes, for sure. There's no doubt about it. Um, you know, my family grounds me, my friends. I, I really tr- I, I'm very particular about the people I surround myself with. They have to be positive. They have to be truthful, you know, and and I try to be that to them as well. Because without that kind of, you know, day-to-day influence, you can really just go. (laughs) You can be like a feather in the wind. You you won't have any kind of, like you're saying, grounded. You won't be grounded. So I definitely um, lean on my family and friends and my relationship with Jesus, uh, Jesus Christ, to to remember who I am and why I'm here. And and I'm very blessed to have a mother who kept me in the church my entire life. And, you know, I haven't been, by far, I have not been perfect. But at the same time, I know um, I do have a relationship with with God. And and I'm able to reach towards that whenever I feel like I'm not, you know, not grounded. Okay. Okay, great. So... You spoke about goals and everything. So, what's next for you? Like, what what are some of those big goals that you have for your life? Um, you know, <laughs> again, <laughs> I am so random. <laughs> I have always had a goal of owning a nonprofit. Actually, I know that seems <laughs> kind of weird from some of the not interests really. I have. <laughs> not really, but yeah, keep doing. <laughs> okay, I um, I I've always dreamed of having a nonprofit. I'm not sure exactly what that's for, but giving is like it's it's the greatest feeling in the world to me to see someone else um, get something they need, earn something that they need, and just be able to provide that inspiration to people. So I definitely want to own a nonprofit, and it will probably have an international aspect to it um, and probably have some kind of, you know, something to do with children and need, but I'm not sure exactly what that is yet. And instead of, you know, pushing towards that and, and just, you know, starting one, I'm kind of waiting on, on God to guide me to, to that path. But right now I'm really, really busy with so many different things. Um, and it's funny because today I was thinking about this 
literally today, it's going to be in my vlog for tomorrow. <laughs> I vlog every day, um, you know, most of the big events that happen in my day, you know, during my day. Yeah. And I'm, don't, I'm a regular person, you know, I wake up, go to work, and, and do silly errands and all kinds of stuff, but, you know, I vlog to help people, you know, just as a source of entertainment and to just inspire them, especially you know, my relationship with God and to show how that is acted out um, and how I acted out. And yeah. that's the definition of the KG Lifestyle. It's, it's my lifestyle. So the KG Lifestyle vlog is the channel for my vlogging. And then I'm also um, writing right now. I just became a writer for naturallycurly.com. So some of my articles are up now. Okay, congratulations. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Never saw that coming. Like, who called me a writer? <laughs> what? <laughs> but uh, apparently God this, thought I could do this, and he gave okay. me the opportunity, and I'm taking it. So I'm very blessed. Um, I'm also making videos for them. So on their naturallycurly.com channel on YouTube, you'll see me. Um, what else is going on? I have my regular channel, the KG Lifestyle. Um, so I'll be, I'll have fashion and hair stuff and hair, uh, you know, hairstyles and all kinds of stuff on there, just as it's been for the last year and a half. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it that I, I could think of off top. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, Kayla, thanks very much for doing this quick interview. And, um, of course, guys, if you're listening to this interview, you're probably seeing it in KIK Magazine. Or you're seeing it on YouTube. So if you're on YouTube and you want to get the full article, check out www.keepitkinky.net for more. Thanks again, Kayla. No problem. And you know what? I completely forgot to mention another big project. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, it's called um, blackhairpower.com. I can't yes. believe I forgot about that. Again, I have so many things on my plate that it's just crazy so blackhairpower.com is a site for empowerment and it's very um it's basically a site that really reflects my thoughts about empowering women based on you know how they feel about their hair so yeah check that out if you have time to <laughs> okay great so we know where we can find kayla g and we know where we can find out more about her on her site and that's the blackhairpower.com dot yes. com Yes. And the KG Lifestyle.com. Um, there's the blackhairpower.com and then KG Theory.com. KG Theory.com. So, yes. So, so those two sites are the ones that I, I'm always on. Great. So if you're on YouTube, you'll probably see this in the video description box. We'll have all the links for you to check them out. Yay! So <laughs> great. Thanks for listening, guys. We know that the um, video wasn't there today, but you know. Thanks for sticking with us. And of course, Kayla G was very, very entertaining. So, <laughs> hey, good stuff. Thank you. <laughs> All right, take care. Bye.